Using React and a backend, we can easily add a Google Authentication to our website. In my last video, I showed you how to use Google Authentication in Nest.js as a backend, and now this video will show you how to connect that backend to a website by using a Google Authentication package with React. To recap, we are using our client ID generated in Google Console in our last video to get a new access token whenever a user logs in, and then we'll send that access token to our backend, which will then validate that user and send back the access token and refresh token to our front end. We can then use that access token for subsequent requests, including getting the user. Let's jump right into the code, and for this project, I am using Next.js, but using a standard React app will work just as well. Inside of our index.tsx file, this is our home functional component. Now in order for us to use Google Authentication, we need a React package. This package is called React Google Login, and so we can run in our terminal npm install react-google-login. Now back in our home page, we can return an h1 tag that says login with Google, and then we can also include the Google Login component provided by our React Google Login package. This component is the button that you click that says sign in with Google. Now I need to pass in some props. The first prop is our client ID, and this is going to be the Google client ID that was generated in the last video by Google Cloud Console. So we can add that environment variable into our .in file, and it's going to be set to next public Google client ID. And the reason I'm using that name is because in Next.js, you need to have the next public prefix to all your environment variables that are being passed to the front end website. And if you're using just a standard React app, this wouldn't be necessary. Back on our index, we can send that client ID to that environment variable. And then we're going to also add a button text parameter that says login with Google. The next prop is our on success callback. This will be an async function that takes response as a parameter. And you'll notice the typing of response is a Google login response or a Google login response offline. And we'll use that in just a moment. Now I need to create a function that will handle logging in our user with our backend. This function will vary based off what your backend looks like, but since we're following this tutorial series, I'm going to be using the backend that we created in the last tutorial. So we can create a new folder called lib, and then inside of it put Google login.ts file. Here we can create a default function that takes in a response of type Google login response or Google login response offline. This response field has many different types including access token, name, image URL, and more. But all we need for this is the access token. So we can check if the access token is in the response. And then if so, we're going to wrap everything in a try and catch statement. We will then get the token from the response. With this token, we can then send it to the backend to validate the user and return a new access token and refresh token that we will use for the backend. To do this, we'll use fetch and we'll pass in localhost 8080 as our backend slash auth slash google slash login. And then in the init, we'll add the method of post and headers to accept application slash JSON and same with content type. Then our body will simply be the value of token wrapped with json.stringify. Next, then we can return the result.json. Many projects you'd want to store the refresh token in the local storage, so you could do that here as well, but for simplicity, we'll keep that out of here. You could also use that access token to fetch the user as well. Now inside of our closing catch statement, we'll return undefined, and then also outside of our if statement, we will return undefined as well. Back on our index component, we can set the tokens to the await of our Google login function passing in response. Then we can check if tokens is undefined, and if so, we'll show an alert of error while logging in with Google, and then we'll also put the one there for debugging in just a moment. Now, in the else clause of this, you could route them to a dashboard or a redirect page. This is where you're doing the logic once the user has been logged in. There is also another callback that's on failure, and it accepts the response as an async function. It'll run another alert that says error with logging in with Google, and it'll put two. The last parameter being passed is our cookie policy, which is just single host origin. Now with a backend running and an existing user added with our same email, we can run this project. If you click the login with Google button, a dialog will pop up and you can select your Gmail account. Once you've selected an account, then that means your website has access to those access token 
and refresh token. If you want to see the different error messages, log in with a Gmail account that is not listed in your backend, and you'll get an error logging in with Google 1, which is that first if tokens is undefined. It means that the Google authentication worked, but there's no user that corresponds to that account. Now you click that login and then close it, and you'll get an error logging with Google 2, which is the on failure callback error message. So there you have a functional Google authentication with your React app. If you enjoyed this project, please leave a like and subscribe as I'll be posting more videos like this in the future.